What is up guys? Miles from Miles Fit, Montreal's number one private personal training studio. So today I wanted to do a quick video talking about fasting. So intermittent fasting is a really hot topic right now. Everybody's talking about intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet. And what's interesting about diets is that they have their cycles and their periods. So we go from high carb to low carb, back and forth over time. And there's so many diets that have been created over time. And not a lot of people know this, but the uh, ketogenic diet was actually done, I think in the late 1800s. So this is nothing new. You know, we demonize one nutrient. First it's fat, then it's carbs, then it's back to fat, then it's back to carbs. Things switch over time. But what people fail to realize is it's not one nutrient that's throwing things off. There are a couple things in our culture that are really throwing things off. So for example, when it comes to nutrition, portion control. So sometimes people are eating well, but they over consume calories by either A, eating too much, or B, being in a calorie surplus by virtue of the fact that they're going out on the weekend, partying or having weekend cheap meals, alcohol, all this kind of stuff. When it comes to losing weight and being in shape, what's key is that you keep your calories in check, right? And you want to do that consistently. That's why it's frustrating. You can go a whole week eating well, and then all of a sudden after that one week, blow the whole thing with a huge cheat meal. Now this isn't for everyone. There are some genetic anomalies, people that can eat whatever they want. And when they have a big cheat meal, it doesn't disrupt things metabolically or in terms of body composition. But for your average person, if they eat well Monday to Friday, and then Friday night go out and have a big cheat meal, and on the weekend, they're a little bit loose and laid back as well, that's gonna throw off all the hard work during the week. So the question becomes, when it comes to setting up a diet, what are the factors and elements of success? So I'm gonna take a moment to share this with you. So number one I mentioned is food amount, portion control. It's how much you consume. And intermittent fasting is especially a great technique for people who are looking to regulate food amount, regulate their total calories. So there are many different ways to do intermittent fasting. I've been experimenting with it personally for three years. I've helped many, many clients implement and integrate intermittent fasting in their lifestyle protocols to facilitate their weight loss and help them reach their health and wellness goals. It's not for everybody. So usually when it comes to a method or system, people you know, bow down to it and make that method or system their God. The reality is there are foods and there are a way of consuming foods dependent upon our lifestyle and where we're at in our life. You might be following a nutrition plan right now that's working for you because you have a lot of free time. But as soon as you get really busy, that plan might not work for you anymore. So it's important to understand that the environment will determine and dictate a lot when it comes to how you need to set up your nutrition program. So back to regulating food amount and intermittent fasting. If you're somebody who struggles with overeating in the evening, late night snacking, and or you're somebody who likes to go out to restaurants and indulge in some wine and some cheat meals, intermittent fasting can become your best friend. So like I was saying, it's something I've been doing personally for three years. The model that I've been using is I pretty much skip breakfast, I skip a morning snack, and I have a lunch, but later. So I'll usually have lunch around 2, 3 p.m., that's one meal. And then I'll have another meal for supper that's usually around 7 or 8 p.m. So I have two meals during the day. That's a typical day. Um, and then when I'm going out to a restaurant or I'm going to be indulging in a larger meal, or maybe having some wine or some extra calories, I'll fast for the whole day. So, for example, if I'm going out Friday night, uh, on Thursday, I'll eat my dinner and then I won't eat until Friday night. So some people who might be hearing this right now might be thinking, wait a second, I was told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I was told that you have to eat small frequent meals throughout the day. And I'm here to tell you to be the merchant of truth, the bearer of wisdom and knowledge, that that's not actually true. Sorry to break it to you guys, you've been duped. 
The element and factor that regulates body composition and your weight, how you look, etc., is food amount. So if you can regulate that, you're off to the races, especially if you don't want to do some crazy diet. I always tell people, however you're eating now, if you're on a diet, if you cannot see yourself eating that way in one to two years, you're going to fail because it's not long-term and sustainable. So again, intermittent fasting has become very, very popular because it's a way to have your cake and eat it too. If you can delay gratification, if you can push when you eat your food and close the window. So instead of eating from, let's say you get up at six in the morning and you go to bed at 10 at night, instead of eating all day from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m., you reduce that window. So for myself, like I said, I'll start eating at 2, 3 p.m., one meal, and I'll eat at 7, 8 p.m., one meal, so I'll have two meals. And then like I said before, I'm going to a restaurant or a social gathering or something like that, I'll fast for the whole day. So all of my calories are in a small window so I can indulge and not feel like I'm depriving myself. And when I use the word indulge, what I really mean to say is have some things I wouldn't typically have within my normal nutrition structure, but not go nuts. Because at the end of the day, if you just go bananas, that's not going to uh, help you on your quest to be a healthy, whole human being with a proper body composition. So that's what I do personally. And what I've been experimenting with recently, for the first time in my life, I did an extended fast, 72 hours. So that was an interesting experiment. I've never done that before. Uh, to not have supper consciously and let that kind of be drawn out a little bit. So it was a good friend of mine's wedding back in June. So I finished eating dinner on Wednesday evening and the wedding was on Saturday where dinner would be uh, Saturday evening. So I didn't eat from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so 72 hours. It was a very interesting experience to not have supper and to just observe my body, to be my own experiment, to learn from listening to my body. And that's what I did. And I saw that hunger is one of those things that's really an illusion. We get in habits and grooves. It's kind of like you always snack. You're always going to get hungry every two to three hours. That actually subsides when you practice fasting. It's only there because your body adapts to what you're doing and expects certain things. But that's not actually how it works. The body adapts. So when I did my extended fast and I didn't have supper, it was weird. I normally have an evening routine. I normally eat supper. Here I was just drinking water. It felt very awkward. And uh, part of me really wanted to eat, but that wasn't hunger. That was emotional. That was psycho-emotional. I was ingrained with these habits of always having supper. So once I omitted that meal and I woke up the next day, I was off to the races. I was good to go for the whole fast until Saturday evening. So I did the 72 hours and it was very enlightening. You know, my body was lighter. I was feeling better. My skin was looking better. Everything just felt better. And I think that's because we're so used to bombarding ourselves with food all the time that the machine is always on. The car is always being driven. You're racking up the miles on the dashboard. No pun intended, miles from miles fit, of course. So giving your body that break. And what's interesting in every religion and culture, there's some type of fasting integrated, whether it's Yom Kippur or Ramadan or something like that, there's fasting integrated. There's this dissociation from food and this internalization of connecting to ourselves. Who are we observing our bodies, observing our thoughts, not always thinking about food and stuffing our face all the time, not being in front of the TV, just eating popcorn and occupying our mind with eating. That's not the way to do things. So if you haven't done intermittent fasting before, I encourage you to try it as an experiment. I always tell people, be your own experiment. Try things, right? Someone tells you about something, do it a research. No, don't stupidly just jump into things. Like I'm telling you to try intermittent fasting, but do a little bit of research. Don't just jump into it. See what could work well for you. But it's worked really well for me. Typically when I'm doing the intermittent fasting, I'm just drinking water, I'm drinking coffee, representing Fou de Toi in NDG on Monkland. Dan and Kimmy, great human beings. If you haven't been to Fou de Toi on Monkland, go there. Excellent coffee. It's not their coffee. They carry some coffee brand. This is delicious coffee. They have amazing, healthy snacks, supplements, salads, all kinds of great stuff. I'm just gonna take a sip of my coffee if you don't mind. Thank you very much. So, 
talking about intermittent fasting, I decided this week, and this is going to sound nuts to a lot of people, to try a very extended fast. So right now as we speak, I'm about, let me do the math, 90 hours into a fast. 90 hours, that's right. So I had a big barbecue on Sunday. That was my last meal. And I've decided to fast for one whole week, seven days. I know, crazy, right? I was only gonna fast till Thursday or Friday and I told myself, I like to learn through experiencing. And I like to talk about what I've gone through. I don't like to talk about, you know, educated guesses. I can form some educated guesses, but when I really talk and coach people, I like to speak from my real world experience. So I thought, you know, I've done intermittent fasting for three years. I've done a 72 hour fast. Let me not go to four or five days. Let me try one week. So I can have as part of my real life vocabulary that I've done a one week fast. So here I am, 90 hours in, I feel good. I'm not hungry, I feel amazing. I've just been drinking water and coffee. Um, if you're thinking I'm taking certain supplements, the only thing I'm taking right now is a probiotic in the evening. And I think I might take my multivitamin that I have starting now kind of halfway through, just to give some extra vitamins and minerals to facilitate different chemical processes and metabolic functions. Um, doesn't interrupt the fasting process to a big degree to my understanding based on my research But I think I'm going to integrate the multivitamin in with the fasting So anyways, I'm doing a one week fast just drinking water just drinking coffee And learning and listening from my body We as human beings consciously think we know everything we think we're in control but the fact of the matter is the body has an innate component of wisdom. When you have a cut, you don't have to tell your cut to heal. Your body has its own healing mechanisms. It knows what to do. Do you realize how many metabolic and chemical processes and functions are taking place right now as we speak? First of all, even though you're focused on listening to me, your whole brain is taking in the entire environment everything is coming in and to not be overwhelmed we have different parts of the brain but there's a particular part called the ras the reticular activating system this is kind of like the part of your brain that determines what you should focus on versus what you shouldn't so it narrows down your conscious experience but we are unconsciously assimilating the environment at a very very high degree so that's just one thing your heart's beating blood is pumping oxygen is getting into the cells feeding the mitochondria, producing energy. Or if in my case, I'm running on ketones right now, breaking down fat for fuel and producing ketone bodies that my body is using to be energized. Because as a guy who hasn't eaten in 90 hours, I feel fine. I feel fine, I'm not lightheaded, I don't have low energy. Um, I feel great. So the body is an interesting thing that knows what to do. We just have to step out of the way with our ego and control mechanisms and let the body go, let the body heal, let it do what it needs to do. And that's one of the reasons why I'm experimenting personally with intermittent fasting. I wanna see what my body does. I wanna learn from the wisdom of my body. I don't wanna be so arrogant and have so much of the ego to think I know everything, right? There's so many things with our bodies that we don't understand and we're just learning and uncovering now. But the fact of the matter is the wisdom is there, the intelligence is there. The question is, not if we're connected, we are connected. The question is, are we listening? Are we observing what our body is telling us? So I'm a big proponent of learning from our environment, learning from nature, learning from our body. There is an innate wisdom there for us to pick up on, to act as a mirror, to experience and see ourselves in a different light. So fasting has been an enlightening experience for me over three years, doing this year for the first time a three-day fast, changed my perspective and now attempting a one week fast. And I know I'm gonna get there, I'm not gonna break. It's not one of these things where I'm smelling pizza and hamburgers and you know I can't control myself. I'm in a certain zone where it's actually easy. I could probably keep going. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea to keep going, but I wanna try at least one week to be able to learn what this one week experience is like. 
So I encourage you guys to read and research about intermittent fasting. I didn't talk about the ketogenic diet, but the ketogenic diet, just talk briefly about that. It's predominantly a fat based diet with low carb and low protein. A lot of people think they're doing the ketogenic diet. They're eating maybe 30, 40% protein, 40, 50% fat and low carb, but you're really only doing the true ketogenic diet when your fat content is maybe 70 to 80%, really more 80%, and uh, your carbs are you know under 10%, and your protein is 10% at the most. Then you'll really enter into that state. And there's some people that do intermittent fasting on a daily basis with the ketogenic diet. I'm not gonna go into that now. There's a whole bunch of variations and permutations of using intermittent fasting and using the ketogenic diet to improve your health markers to improve your energy, your sleep, your skin, your psycho-emotional capacity and state. Um, food and mood, food and emotions are intimately linked. The body is an interconnected system of systems. We forget about that. And proof is in the structure of our society. Just look at the medical system. You have someone who specializes in the heart, someone who specializes in the brain, someone who specializes in the digestive system and they narrowly focus on these different areas. But the fact of the matter is they all interconnect, right? Your digestive system links into your whole immune system, all of your metabolic functions, brain health and brain function, it's all connected. And this is one of the reasons I believe we have so much dysfunction in our society today. We have compartmentalized everything. The heart is here, the brain is here, the digestive system is here. And it's not just in our organ and glands and in medicine, it's in our lives. We live in our little house, in our little worlds. You know, one time we were tribes, we were in groups of people. We were in large groups of people and we moved as a unit, as a family, as a collective. Now we're so much in our own worlds and disconnected from others. You know, despite there being social media, and yes, we're connected to people that way, it's not the same energetic connection and interaction. It's different. So we came from this tribal evolution, this tribal upbringing, this tribal and community connection, and we've just dispersed into our own little worlds, right? Our own little countries, our own little homes. You know, we might have communities that are, you know, seemingly their communities, right? Like, I'm located with my business in NDG on Monkland. So the NEG has a community element, but the whole municipality is not really a true community, a true tribe. There are aspects of it, but I believe that we need to go back to being a community, being connected, so connected to our bodies, understanding the system of systems, connecting to other human beings, not being selfish and arrogant, you know, making it about the people around us, supporting our brothers and sisters. We are all human beings on one planet. The humanity that we're a part of here is mankind. We're one living, breathing organism. And we forget that. There's a quote I really like. It goes something like this. I might not get it 100% right, but it says, no branch is so foolish to fight amongst themselves. It's all part of the same tree. We're all part of one family. The question is, are we gonna consciously wake up and realize this? And I'm not talking in some foo-foo spiritual way. This is a fact of the matter, guys. We all live on one planet. We all have one backyard. Climate change and all of these things going on affect all of us. Nobody is immune from the systemic chaos. We're all part of it. And if you're right now in a part of the world where things seem good, like here in Montreal, just because it's good now doesn't mean it's always gonna be good. Just because we've been immune to this point from natural disasters and earthquakes and stuff like that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen, right? So anyways, I don't want to get all doom and gloom and start talking about the future and artificial intelligence, neural networks, machine learning, and all that stuff. I could talk about that for days and days. That's another one of my passions that has zero to do with fitness, but uh, an interesting topic nonetheless, because it interrelates into our future as a species and how we're going to go forward and how we're going to live together and interact. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video about intermittent fasting and my personal journey, and hopefully you take away something useful and constructive. If you do not know what Miles Fit is, we are Montreal's number one private personal training studio. So we don't do boot camp classes, we don't do any of that stuff, we focus on one thing, personalized 
individualized and customized fitness based on you and your specific needs, meeting you at the level you're at. Right now, the trend is all boot camps and group training. That's cool if you like that. That's not us. We only do one thing, and that's one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have someone who has really benefited in my life from one-on-one -on -one coaches in my life, in spirituality, in business, in training, and I love that one-on-one -on -one dynamic. I wanna have the teacher all to myself, all eyes and attention on me. As soon as you have three, four, five, six, 10, 15, 20 people, attention is dispersed. And we get so many clients who come in who've done small group training, group training, and while they might have enjoyed it, they didn't get that intention. And usually they end up with some kind of injury because the coach was not watching them. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private training and you live in Montreal, check us out, Miles Fit. We've been around seven years. We've helped hundreds, if not thousands of clients over the years. We're a huge team of, I think, almost 15 trainers. And this is what we do. We're not some new studio on the block. We're not some new gym. We have a proven track record and proven results. And this has to do with a holistic approach, not holistic in the sense of holy, but holistic in the sense of a whole approach, body, mind, and spirit, interconnected system of systems. Who are you? What's your story? What are your needs? That's where we come into the equation. We're not about crazy six pack abs and narcissistic nonsense. We're really about just connecting to you and your goals. It's your journey. It's not for me to impose on you what's right for you. It's for you to connect to yourself and discover what you need. And we're just there as a catalyst to facilitate your journey, but it's your journey with us supporting you, but it's not about us, it's about you. And that's what we do at the studio. So we check out your posture, we check out your alignment, we deal with injuries and issues, and we work with all ages. Our youngest client, eight, oldest client over 80, eight to 80, we work with everybody. And we're in the Monkland Village in NDG, on Monkland between Hampton and Royal, and I'd love for you guys to come check us out. So check out Miles Fit, www.milesfit.com. We're obviously here on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We have a newsletter. If you go to our website, you can sign up for that. We have a blog with like almost 40 free information articles on nutrition, mindset, training, all free. So go check it out, guys. So Miles from Miles Fit, tuning out. Thanks for listening and watching. And if you try intermittent fasting, have some coffee. How good is coffee? Amazing. Ciao, guys.